I started doing community sings over 20 years ago. And I think um, the first time was at the Levine School of Music. And I've been doing them there for this whole amount of time, kind of on a monthly basis, uh, except for the summer. But I think the real introduction to doing this kind of thing came when I started a choir at All Souls Unitarian Church. And I started it because there were so many people who wanted to sing and didn't read music. And I said, well, we can have a choir, you know, where you don't have to read music. And um, so that was where I started doing this. And the concept of getting a random assortment of people to sing together, I think, um, emerged out of that. So. Lord, they took my freedom away. Now, at some point, I might say, go the other way. You can turn around, go the other way, go the right way, okay? Now, sometimes, especially if you're listening to recordings of this, you might hear what sounds like a drum beat on the one, and it's not a drum, except it is a drum that's created by the floor. We weren't allowed to drum, you know, except in New Orleans on Thursdays. 
<laughs> and so people created their own drum, not even consciously really, but they might have built their churches up off the ground. And as a result, the whole floor, the whole church became the drum, okay? So you would hear, okay? I'm going to give you some instructions as we go through this. I might say, uh, fly, believe a fly, you're welcome to fly. Do the knee bone bend, you're welcome to bend your knees as you're moving. Run, believe a run, just mimic running. Pray, believe a pray. Shout, believe a shout, whatever. Just listen, it's kind of like a square dance, but it's not square, it's a circle. <laughs> Walk, believe, and walk, and yeah. Walk, believe, and walk, and yeah. Do the knee bone bend, 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 and yeah. Fly, believe, a fly, and yeah. Fly, believe, a fly, and yeah. Fly, believe. Come on, run, believe a run, oh run, believe a run. Come on, run, believe a run. Why don't you run, believe a run? Come on and do that knee bone bend. Come on and do that knee bone bend. You wanna walk, believe a walk. Well, I walk, believe a walk. I think that um, it's important to have this kind of experience because there are so many people who want to sing, but who you know, tell me again and again and again that they can't sing, they don't sing, they won't sing. Um, not even in the quiet of their own shower sometimes. People are scared, they're just uncomfortable. And because I think there's a... Um, there is kind of a, a way of thinking that says, if you can't be good at it, you shouldn't do it at all. And I really, I think that's so sad because singing is a very powerful community tool. Um, some people get the experience, or at least, let's say during the 60s and 70s, got the experience of singing together on picket lines and things like that. We had labor unions and those unions had songs and you know, and um, most African Americans who do church have an experience of singing together and creating music together. Um, I think other cultures do it differently, maybe reading from hymnals and things like that. But So there are groups of people who get together and sing, but a random assortment of people who have little or no experience or a lot of experience coming together and singing together and starting with nothing. And then by the end, you know, really sounding like a choir is pretty exciting to most people. And I think they begin to understand that it changes something in them. I think they may not think about the fact that they are breathing air with other people that maybe they've never shared the space or the air with. And yet they are creating something um, new and lovely and exciting. So I think it's important for all of those reasons that people come and have a chance to express themselves but be part of something bigger than who they are, where there is no criteria to sing well, just to sing and to still have it sound good.
other half of your song. Okay? So sing that and basses listen. Okay? Here we go. In the Lord, in the Lord, my soul's been anchored in the Lord. Boom, 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 my soul's been anchored, anchored in the Lord, my soul's been anchored, anchored in the Lord, my soul's been anchored, anchored in the Lord, my soul's been anchored in the Lord. My soul's been anchored, anchored in the Lord. My soul's been anchored, anchored in the Lord. My soul's been anchored, anchored in the Lord. My soul's been anchored in the Lord. You can either go up or down. Okay, lady faces go up. <laughs> Male faces go down. Okay? Oh my Lord, my soul's been anchored, anchored in the Lord. My soul's been felt like it was important to do spirituals tonight because I really wanted this to be related to the experience that we're having of Fortune. And Fortune was an enslaved African in this country during the 1700s. And um, I want really to just make a connection all the time between um, the music that we're doing and the experience of, of um, Fortune. I don't know anything really about the music created by enslaved Africans in the North. Um, it was one of my questions coming into this project and I don't know whether I'll have an answer um, when it's over, but a huge body of song was created by enslaved Africans in this country and the descendants. And um, it's a way of helping me to create the emotion around fortune. So I started with a moan, um, the words of which are, Lord, how come me here? I wish I'd never been born. And then ending with, oh, freedom, and before I'll be a slave, I'll be buried in my grave. So that people are not only having the experience of singing together, but hopefully an experience that takes them emotionally um, from the mindset of someone who may have been enslaved uh, to a state of really being able to articulate one's desire for freedom. Um, in many ways, I feel like all of us have those states internally. And so we can relate to them on a personal level or we can relate to them as something in history or in the society. But however people come to that music, uh, I think it will connect them with the experience of fortune and other, um, other people, other enslaved people, um, then and now, as a matter of fact, because slavery is not something that has gone away totally from our societies.
I think that uh, a lot of people miss the experience of singing together. Um, in African African American communities, um, the music is created by the people who are there. And some of us have never had the experience of creating music in any way, shape, or form. So it's, it's more than just the process of singing. It's actually giving yourself permission to sing a melody the way you feel it sometimes, to create a harmony the way you hear it without it being given to you. I try to provide all of those experiences. So we'll do a congregational song, and I'll say, just find the harmony that you like and just sing that. Uh, it may be different from what the person next to you is singing. Um, so I think it's important for people to find ways to express themselves, but also to understand that you can express yourself in some kind of unity or unison or diversity even within a community. And, you know, the, the metaphor is let's create harmony. Mm. So harmony can be dictated or harmony can be created. And I try to offer people a range of experiences in which they understand that they are part of a community and that it's the, cre the community that is created. Thank you. Thank you all very much, and I'll see you next time, wherever that is. Thank you. And don't forget about Fortune. Get a brochure, take a handful, so you can share them with your friends. Thank you all very much.